Welcome. The purpose of this tutorial is to introduce you to the key elements of the activity tab, which is where we input the activity data related to zone usage. This determines the majority of the internal heat gains, which in turn impact on the building's heating, cooling and ventilation requirements. During the tutorial, I'll look at activity data and template selection methods, the key data input options and relationships to other tabs, and finally, time schedule basics. The activity data covers occupancy, internal environment criteria such as design internal temperatures, ventilation rates, illuminance levels and equipment usage. You can see that the cellular office activity template is loaded at building level. All zones in the building will therefore inherit this template unless they're changed at block or zone level. For this reason, it's best to load the most common activity type at building level and change it only where appropriate in the blocks and zones below. After clicking on the activity template, the data report for the template is shown in the info panel. The templates provided by Design Builder are locked library data and cannot be edited. You can, however, copy and edit them or create your own templates which become part of the model data. One of the ways I can change the activity template is by opening the browse screen. This is accessed by clicking near the template name and then on the browse button adjacent to it. The template can be changed by double clicking the required activity in that screen. Scrolling through the screen you can see there are a number of different building types each with their own set of activity templates for areas such as offices, meeting rooms, toilets and circulation areas. The activity template must be selected from the correct building type. For example, offices within a warehouse should be selected from the warehouse and storage folder. Loading a template from the office folder will give different results to an office in a, an industrial building such as a warehouse the sum of the template data is slightly different. I can also change the template by either double clicking the relevant item in the info panel like so or by selecting it with a single click and then applying the data using the tick icon. I'll select the Open Plan Office template and then apply the data using the tick icon. I'll now assign the activities to the remaining zones. The Open Plan Office template is loaded at building level so I only need to change the reception and circulation zones. I can do this easily by going to the zone in the navigation panel and then changing the data in the info panel. Descriptive zone labelling helps you to do this just as quickly in large models with a number of zones. Notice that when I click on the blue merged zones the activity tab is not displayed. This is because the merged zones use the activity data assigned to the parent zone. Some of the activity tab options depend on the settings applied in model options. The info panel shows that the early gains option is selected. This provides an appropriate level of detail for most models. The internal gains data input options can be simplified using the lumped option or bespoke gains data can be applied for each zone using the detailed option. The detailed option is not recommended for general purpose. At block or zone level we have the option to change the zone type. The standard zone 
is a normal occupied or intermittently occupied zone within the building, such as an office or storeroom, and can be heated and cooled. A semi-exterior unconditioned zone is unoccupied and is neither heated nor cooled, such as a roof space or car park. A cavity zone is an unconditioned, narrow sealed vertical cavity such as the glazed cavity within a double facade or a tromb wall. A plenum is an unoccupied void with no heating, cooling or mechanical ventilation through which air flows to the zones it serves. We have the option here to set a zone multiplier which enables models with repetitive features to be simplified for simulation purposes. This option is fully described with all the other activity tab options in the help file. We can switch off zones at building block or zone level by unchecking the include zone box. Notice how doing this removes the black text from the zone names to ensure that the excluded zones are easily identifiable. Switching zones off results in surfaces between included and excluded zones being modelled as adiabatic, meaning that heat is transferred to and from the wall mass as if the temperature of the excluded zone is the same as the included zone. The activity template loads default data in the model relevant to the activity type. For example, the occupancy density here for an open plan office will be higher than that of a cellular office and the heating set point will be higher than the default for say a store. These values can be changed using the slider controls if desired by either placing the cursor at the required point and left clicking once or using the arrow controls to move the set point up and down in 0.5 degree increments or by left clicking, holding and dragging the slider to the required position. The modified data value is shown in bold red, with red indicating that the data has been hard set at that level and bold indicating that the value is different to the data in the currently selected template. It remains hard set in red even after moving back to the default value. because it's been changed. Unless this is intentional it may be better to use the clear to default tool to ensure that the set point will change with any changes made at the levels above. The clear to default options can also be accessed using the right mouse button which also includes the option to change only the currently selected data Care must be taken when clearing data, and clearing only the selected data can be the safest option. Note that any changes made to individual options are replaced by default data if a new activity template is loaded. Caution should be applied before changing the template data where modelling is being undertaken to comply with national energy codes. This is because the activity templates may use data according to the national calculation methodology and changing it may invalidate the results. You can switch off slider controls in the program options dialog if you wish. This enables you to input bespoke figures for each of the options by simply typing in the relevant box and can be used when the required value is higher or lower than the normal range shown on the slider bar such as very high computer or process gains. I'll revert to slider controls. All activity data is used to generate simulation data at zone level, except for the holiday schedule, which is only visible and applied at building level. Additional information regarding the holiday schedule is shown in the info panel. 
The environmental control options dictate the operational set points for each of the systems when those systems are scheduled on. For example, the default model data with the open office template loaded will control the heating to 22 degrees C and switch on mechanical cooling above 24 degrees C. The temperature set point controls the zone air temperature by default but other controls parameters can be used if desired when setting the simulation options. The minimum fresh air set points govern the airflow rate to the zone when mechanical ventilation to the zone is enabled. The airflow rate can be based on either occupancy or floor area or both depending on the outside air definition method selected in the mechanical ventilation header of the HVAC tab. It's important to note that these set points are only used when the heating, cooling, mechanical and natural ventilation options are enabled and this is done in the HVAC tab. Here we can see that mechanical ventilation, heating and cooling are all enabled by default. So these systems would operate according to the relevant set points in the activity tab. These options can of course be switched off by unchecking the relevant box. The natural ventilation option however is not enabled by default. This must be switched on if you wish to model the effects of natural ventilation. The HVAC and natural ventilation options are covered in more detail in later tutorials. The default target illuminance again relates to the activity type, whereby an office will require a higher lux level than say a storeroom. An increased target illuminance level will increase the energy consumed by the lighting systems and the related internal heat gains. The computers option is switched off by default as the office equipment gains include an element for normal IT use associated with the activity type. If particular zones have higher than normal IT usage for the activity template used, the associated gains can be added here. Additional significant gains not related to typical small scale office or IT equipment, for example large multifunctional copiers or vending machines, may be input under the miscellaneous header. Any catering or process loads can be input under the respective headers, although these would normally be separately zoned with the appropriate activity template assigned. Some headers also include time schedules that determine when the parameters shown under that header are active during calculations. The activity template contains the schedules that relate to internal gains such as occupancy and office equipment. For example, the open office equipment schedule is set here under the equipment header and the open office occupancy schedule is set here under the occupancy header. The openings, lighting and HVAC system schedules are set under the relevant headers in the respective tabs. Here we see that the office heating schedule is set under the heating header. All these schedules are replaced automatically when a new activity template is loaded. When I click on the occupancy schedule under the header, the info panel displays the data contained in the schedule. Included in this data is the occupancy profile which shows the occupancy fractions used in the calculation. For example, this open office schedule shows that on working weekdays the occupancy is 0 till 7 a.m. then 25 percent from 7 to 8 a.m. etc. etc. An alternative simplified workday schedule can be used if the option is selected in model options. The workday profile is used when the timing option is set to typical workday 
and the schedule data is used when the timing option is set to schedules. The workday schedule provides the facility to vary the on-off time and days per week in the activity tab and also allows for seasonal control of the HVAC systems. I'll now revert to using schedules. Whilst these can be more difficult to set up, they're normally used for more detailed modelling as they provide greater flexibility and more accurately reflect the occupancy patterns and the associated heating, cooling and ventilation loads. Editing and creating bespoke schedules will be covered in a later tutorial. The standard schedules loaded by the activity template should generally be used when modelling buildings for compliance purposes. As these contain the approved national calculation methodology profiles where relevant. We can, if we wish, load different schedules in the same way that we change the activity template using either the info panel or the browse option. Here, for example, I'll go to the HVAC tab and load the office heating schedule with no setback temperature. Additional related information is included in later tutorials which expands on some of this content but you now have the basic information you need to enable you to specify the key activity data in your model.